you have to excuse me, technology is perhaps not my thing when it comes to giving talks. Uh, my lightning talk tonight has actually come out of a very brief conversation with Tommy yesterday. Um, and as you do when you're chattering, I just said, I, I wonder how many of you are aware of the open banking legislation and actually what it's going to mean. Um, at the moment, it may not be the most exciting thing, but I certainly think that in the next 12, 18 months, we're going to see as consumers an amazing difference that it, it makes, but as developers, there's a great deal of potential that's in the next six months or so coming through. So the dry bits to start off with, um, it's a term that's been used to describe two pieces of legislation. The legislation has been passed. Us going through Brexit does not make any difference to that legislation. So you've got competition and market authority legislation. You're probably most familiar with that um, in terms of all the things like your um, utility supply companies. You know that you can just switch your utilities over very quickly. Uh, so did you also know that you can change your bank accounts very quickly? Especially with iSupply, let's say it that way. Uh, did you know that you can change your bank account just the same way? So that was the first part of the CMA legislation. What's actually happened is most of us, despite not always being happy with our banks, choose not to switch our accounts. And so there's been a second wave of legislation coming through to try to make that one easier for us and two, to give us um, more effective power to influence what our banks are doing and how, that, how that's working. Uh, I think they said that there's 2% of all people who were unhappy with their bank accounts actually went as far as to switch away from the bank that they were with. So incredible brand loyalty, <laughs> incredible brand loyalty. Um, I am here talking as an employee of one bank, and I have to say a detractor of the bank that I hold my current account with, and I still am too lazy to have actually switched my account to another bank. Um, so I understand all about this exactly there. Uh, the second part is um, the European Payment Services Directive. Again, it's a part two, because part one's already gone through. Um, but those two bits of regulation, as the slide says, are saying, first of all, it's possible for you to agree to share your transactional data. Now, there'll be lots of people in the room who are sharing their transactional data without necessarily having realised that they've agreed to do that. We all know that Tesco tracks us around if we've got a club card. We know if we buy into any of those loyalty schemes, that as well as the great benefits you get from it, they're learning an awful lot about us as consumers. Um, but whether you actually shop online or not, even your internet searches to an extent are being monitored and feed a lot of data through that those big companies use. The benefit to you of choosing to share your, your transactional data is actually it gives um, smaller businesses that opportunity to bargain on your behalf and get you a better deal for the things that you're looking for. So you will find situations where instead of saying, no, I really hate people sharing my data like that, you're actually going to want people to do that to get you a better price. Massive one. Um, can I just ask, is it how many people in this room uh, run a business that involves you having a, a banking machine, a PDQ or something like that? You and me. Yeah. <laughs> I've got mine in the office here. Okay. We take probably between six and ten transactions a month on our PDQ, not high volume business, as you can imagine. We pay Barclay card £35 a month. It's not a good deal for us. So if instead I could persuade you all to just use Pingit or another third party payment that just went zapped straight into our business account, it would be much better for us. We wouldn't be paying so many fees. And the legislation is going to mean that you can actually initiate payments directly from your, your account without having to pay those fees to PDQ, merchant services providers and other things like that. So it won't just be your PDQ machines that, that it affects. You'll all be aware that you're paying tra transactional charges on your business banking accounts and things like that. It will change. And then finally, um, all financial organisations have got to make public and openly share their products. So at the moment, all banks, 
or all established banks will have special rates for special favoured customers. And whilst we might not all be able to access those special rates, we will at least know that they're there. Maybe giving us something to aspire to. I live in hope. But what it's going to do is put competition into your financial market in the way that it's been in already through our utility supplies, um, through the housing market, lots of other places. And it's going to stop us having to pay over the odds for services that actually aren't always high quality. So it's a, an exciting thing. So uh, a couple of little quotes that people have come through. It's a massive change. As somebody that's working in, in a, a bank, we know that it could almost mean the end to banking as we know it at the moment. But that's exciting. Believe me, it's exciting. That's why I get to play with 3D printers. Uh, but the, the, the key changes, the, the four that are listed there, market efficiency, integration, protecting all of us as consumers, um, giving us that competition choice, and also putting that emphasis on security. So you're probably aware that your bank, like Barclays, is very busy telling you to be vigilant, fraud aware, cyber safe. It's a bunch of developers. You actually know all the traps that people could be falling into. So I'm sure I'm probably speaking to the converted in this room, but looking at that. So yes, I'm here. I have a Barclays hat amongst the others that I wear, but I thought, well, I'll, I'll go out to one of the well-known consultative groups who are looking at the future of fintech and how that affects the consumer market. And they're advising banks, especially the established banks now, to look at the market disruptors. And you'll be aware of places like Monza Bank, things like that, and to actually go out there and try to emulate what they're doing, learn from them, and then as a large organization, do it even better. So it's no good simply doing the bare minimum that the legislation asks you to do. Go out there, do something innovative. Look at understanding the um, digital part of what you're doing. I have to say that my experience of a large corporate has not been what I expected. Um, I have a background in teaching, education, and I was actually facing a situation where I knew I had to learn to code because I would have to teach seven to 11 year olds how to code. And I had no clue how I was going to embark on that. Um, taking a career break, I wandered into a temporary job in the bank and lo and behold, as well as the things that were my daily job, I got the opportunity to learn to code. I couldn't believe it, the professional development I been looking for in my career just popped up in what I saw as a stopgap. Um, and the other opportunities that I've got since then in the same way have meant that, yeah, I'm here for the moment, but we'll, we'll see where that takes us. So uh, all financial institutions are having to look at that digital media at where they are. It doesn't mean that branches are going to close. It just means that what happens in a branch is going to change. So alongside that, it's starting to recognize the power of the information and the data that banks are holding. So banks can learn to do things differently and more effectively. So something very exciting for me that's coming up um, in the near future is the launch of digital check imaging. So no longer are you going to have to physically take that written on bit of paper that some of your customers insist on giving you still. You'll be able to take a photograph of it and that will actually effectively then go through the electronic ways. Um, there's a really ancient piece of legislation from um, 1890 something, should have checked my dates, uh, that prevented you doing that. You had to have the physical check to be able to bank the check. And uh, that's been changed. It's taken five years to change the legislation to make that happen. So banks have had the, pa the ability to do this for a long time. Um, if you're an Apple user, and have banked with Barclays, you may even have been part of the trial. That is what got the legislation changed. But that's there. So actually going through and looking at all the ways in which your internal information could be used more effectively to speed up banking and transactions. And really, what Barclays and a number of other established banks are looking to do are to become these open platform players. So they don't want to just comply with legislation. They want to hear advice from you, the developer, 
population. What would be useful to you? How would you use it? How can we open it up to you? What would you be prepared to pay for it? Good news is anything that's covered by regulation is free of charge. And what I'm hearing from within our organisation is that they really want to go beyond that. They want to see what exciting things could be created out of this. So going beyond open banking, I was just trying to think of a couple of uh, areas where this might be useful to me because I'm quite a selfish person. And uh, at the end of the day, I don't have enough money to play with and I don't have the skills in coding to build the next WOW app that makes use of these APIs. So within the bank, all of us as consumers expect these things to happen. So we want to be able to make payments. I'm afraid that sometimes in order to make my payments, I also have to borrow, whether it's out of my savings or the pot that everybody else puts into the bank there. Uh, but it wouldn't it be better to be better informed to be able to find out about the alternatives? Oh, that bank will offer you this much off if you do this. You're entitled to these extra rewards. Did you know that if you actually went through your banking app onto that website that you got cash back from it? So some of that information. Transactions. I've talked about the frustration of discovering that effectively quite often our PDQ transactions are pretty much cancelled out by how much it costs us to have that payment service. Uh, killer one for me, identify myself. Don't know if any of you have been through trying to prove to a solicitor that you, who you are and that the money that you think is in your bank account is yours. Uh, my husband and I bought our house 18 months ago and the trauma of trying to prove that we had the deposit and that we hadn't laundered money to get it there. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the future when, actually, because banks have already had to go through that identification and verification system, that APIs will mean that other organisations can use that identification um, and not make that process so long. So the fact that none of us any longer get our gas, electricity, water bills as physical paper things, they're no longer going to demand that you've got a statement from the last three months. Uh, so that will help. And then finally, the protect which again is wrapped up in the cybersecurity. Generally, banks are very safe in terms of client data and information around there. So they're not a bad place to store other information yeah. within the, the cloud services that they provide and things like that. So those are going to start to go out there and make that possible. So banks are starting to chunk down their services and think about what they're doing. So that you might want to apply for a store card in a store, and instead of that having to go through um, the separate credit referencing agency, that those credit references that have already been taken to enable you to open your bank account, then the store will be able to just go on that with your permission through banking apps. So that's one possibility. One of the things I was hoping to just open up for you was to make you aware that you can already start to see what Barclays and other banks are doing with all of this. So I can name five or six different banks that already have a site similar to the one that I've referenced up here. So this is the Barclays developer site. It is really just the front door, a portal at the moment, and it doesn't contain anything terribly exciting. So the store at the moment contains those things that are regulatory right now. So they'll tell you where branches are. To be honest, you could find that out quite easily anyway. And every bank has a website that tells you where their branches are. Uh, you can find out where ATMs are. Again, not that useful, but it's there. And it's information that I would have said was out in the public domain. It's actually just been made available through an API now there. Product details is getting a little bit more interesting, but it's still pretty unwieldy unless you found a way of comparing it with other places. I mentioned Monza Bank. Um, I don't know if you're aware that if you have an account with them and have their online banking that you can actually see your balances in other, account, uh, other banks through the same app. It's quite cool. I don't know how long it would take me to get all my login details to all the other <laughs> little places that I don't have any money. Um, into one place, but it's really convenient to actually be able to look and work out where you might have something to pay for the thing that you want. 
Uh, so you're going to see that increasingly. So you might, as I do, have your current account with one bank, but prefer the online banking service from another bank. And there's nothing to stop you wielding that through and linking the two that way. It doesn't mean that the banks are constantly communicating with each other about what you're doing. It just means that you've got that option to see how that works. Uh, coming up, um, there will be more mortgage product details, um, actually being able to get your um, approval in principle, which again, if anybody else has gone through the house buying thing recently, it's still a bit of a trauma. You're actually going to be able to do that with a couple of clicks. So uh, that's going to improve. But the exciting thing is actually going to be when you guys get in there and do something with these sources of information. So if you join up to one of the developer networks, you will be able to look through the library of APIs and see um, what's there. There's a sandbox environment, so you'll be able to test your code and see how it works. Uh, one of my key questions, which it did take me through three very important people to find the answer to, because it's not there and obvious in the legislation, is that there is guidance on how these APIs must be presented and the language that you'll need to be able to use to communicate with them. So if you write your code to work with the Barclays APIs, it will also work with a change of a couple of URLs with Lloyd's, HSBC, and all of the other, there are 250 plus financial institutions that you'll be able to collect data from and, and interface with. But the open banking standards mean that they will be compatible with each other isn't that great? <laughs> if then the rest of the world developed in the same way. Um, so the sandbox environment will give you that opportunity to test what you're doing and see how it works. Uh, then you've got the opportunity to release your app and to actually to do something with it. Um, as I've said, at the moment, those available are not that exciting. What we do know from within the, the bank, and uh, this was confirmed for us at a central meeting on, on Tuesday, is that there is an incredible wealth of information there. There's also, through the, the wrapping of an API, uh, a great possibility in getting that anonymized data, so it's not linked to a particular client, that will help you with actually looking at trends and, and working out spending data and actually help you to look at other products that are connected to it there. So, just a couple of questions for you to think about be before I open up if anybody does have questions. Uh, I don't know. I'm not highly excited about the APIs that are there just now. But actually, I'm really lucky that we have that direct voice. Um, we've been challenged to come out and talk to our developer communities and say, what would you like to see? Is there anything there that excites you? Is there anything that you're thinking now? Well, if that's all stuff that's going to have to be made available, it would be really useful if this was the first thing that was available because I've got this great plan or idea. Um, in a way, I hope I've partly answered the last question, you know, how it's going to affect you if some banks appear more open than others. But can I just give you a couple of minutes to talk amongst yourselves, see if anybody's got anything there, and then I'll open it up for questions almost heated discussion um, happening here where we were just talking around credit agencies and the impact on them. First of all, are we going to see credit agencies survive? How that's going to work? They're going to come under the, the legislation that's there. So the first thing is that they've got to open up what they're doing and find systems of sharing that effectively. For us as consumers, it's going to make it much easier for us to challenge credit ratings that we think are unfair or inaccurate. Um, in terms of it meaning, meaning that, that Tommy can just look up my credit rating and make a decision based on what's there, without me giving permission for that, he's still not going to be able to do that. And secondly, if he comes and feeds back to me that, no, I'm not allowed to buy that thing because I don't have the funds or the equity to do that, then I'm still in a position where I can actually challenge that and look at the market to offer me alternatives to do that. So we should see that coming through, we hope. Did anybody else have any questions, thoughts, comments? How far into this do you have to go before you start having to have some sort of regulatory compliance? Which part of it? Well, I don't know really. It all depends what sort of APIs you're exposing. 
you know, I mean, if you're sort of keeping up with some app that's going to take money from people and, and well transfer money to the bank. So, so the banks, the financial institutions have still got a responsibility for protecting you as the account holder. So although third parties will be able to initiate transactions, you as the consumer still have control over that. It just means that those businesses at the moment that are making large amounts of money out of those transactions will not be able to do that anymore. So I was assured yesterday that it will be as secure as, if not more so, than PayPal. And you think about where PayPal is now. They don't do any marketing for themselves anymore. It's a payment system that's become accepted, trusted, and actually to the point where people starting up new online shops, other systems and services that you want payment for, like to offer it as a third party service to protect the, the consumer. So that level of um, protection should be built in there. Um, I mentioned before, you know, banks have had to build up the trust of their consumers in terms of ensuring that there are suitable levels of authentication and encryption on data. And the APIs are not just releasing great databases of information out to everybody. So uh, we are told, in as much as we can trust anybody, we will still be able to trust what's there. Uh, the legis open banking legislation doesn't mean that people will be able to access your personal transactions without your permission. So the, the idea is putting the power back into the hands of the individual consumer. I think it has cooled down a bit, hasn't it? <laughs> Have you guys switched off the... Chill at the back. You're still warm. <laughs> I'll switch it off at the front then, because the people at the front are starting to look a little bit cold. Um, are there any other thoughts, questions, comments? Fortunately, it's not for me individually to work out the answer to that question, but, but really the, the challenge is that there. Um, I can tell you that Barclays will not be the only bank that's really busy um, consulting firms like Accenture that have had their finger on the pulse and are looking at what's there. There are all sorts of challenger banks already popping up, other fintech apps. Um, I'm actually delighted to be working in a, a workspace where Barclays itself has a, a big um, fintech accelerator um, in London at Shoreditch, uh, which is where Harry and I were on Tuesday, which is actually encouraging startups to disrupt the, the bank, banking world. Um, and it's being aware that what's happened for the last 300, 400 years is not the way we're going to be banking in 20 years' time. So banks are going to have to move with the times or they're going to die. So that's the challenge, and uh, I think it's quite exciting. But as I said, I, I'm not one of those big directors who's there earning the, the, the large salaries for having to work out how to do that. I'm here thinking, yeah, that's quite exciting. But yeah, eventually we shouldn't be having to pay for our banking, or we will have choice in what sort of banking we're paying for. Well, thank you so much for being... Oh, go on. Um, yes? So it's been a while since I worked for... Massively. So internally, it's doing a lot. It's causing a lot of examination of those databases that are forming APIs. So you'll be aware that beyond those that are on open release, there are a lot being created that are being used for analysis within the bank. What it's actually doing is still an anonymized large big data trends, not looking specifically at individual accounts unless there's a reason to be looking at individual accounts in terms of what's happening. It's already pushing trends in what happens. Um, I wouldn't say it's just Barclays, but certainly you'll be aware from your mobile banking or online banking that you're seeing a lot of things changing within that. 
Um, BNB, which is the Barclays Mobile Banking, has certainly started including a lot of other information that's available to you. You don't have to take any notice of it, but I know now that it's very busy offering me a loan and an upgrade to my mortgage and <laughs> generally telling me I don't earn enough to cover what I'm trying to pay out. But <laughs> uh, that said, but it is giving me a lot of choice from within that and trying to encourage me to stay within that brand loyalty at the same time, which is how we're saving the banks um, going through. Uh, we were advised that actually what we're going to see more and more is you'll see access to banks outside through third party retailers, through, through everything else there, so that you may do less and less of your transactional um, banking within your own banking apps, but actually out there through third party servers but also that banks have got to get themselves out there and be trusted brands out there because there's going to be a lot more choice. So if we don't analyse the data, we're going to die. Don't fancy that. There's a lot of death going on. Lots of death. Mm -hmm. But then, go back to the utility companies. There's not. <laughs> <laughs> Are there not more now? No. More now than there were? Um, yes, probably. Yeah. Somebody, somebody. <laughs> yeah, more consumer choice. And it is the same, the Competition and Market Authority. You'll be able to see those trends if you get bored enough to want to go back and look through the history of what they've been looking at. Their spotlight is on the financial industry at the moment. Um, utilities, as I said, was, was the big one before. Health services will probably be the next one. You'll see that happening. I'm sure that's the subtle hint that it's time for me to zippy. <laughs> so thank you so much, and uh, I hope you have a really great evening. And I'm sorry that I can't stay for the rest of it. I will make my excuse now. I've been out and about and uh, late for a couple of nights, and I'm quite sad that I'm not staying to the end because <laughs> there was pizza promised. But thank you all very much. <laughs>